Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there to pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Your will be done. Jesus is actually praying the third petition of a prayer which he had taught his own disciples, a, pray, a prayer that we continue to pray to this very day. You know, it's a very easy petition to pray, but when you're in a situation, when you find that things are grim and look hopeless, you know, like the one that Jesus found himself in, your thoughts and hope is that the will of God will be in line with your will and that things will go well and to your favor. In times of illness, of suffering, of trial, and other circumstances like the fear of being infected with the coronavirus, we may be even afraid to pray these particular words. The reason for hesitation, God's will may not be your will. When His will is not in line with our will, we have a difficult time understanding why things happen the way they do. There are times when we are afraid to ask that His will be done. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, when I find myself in unpleasant situations, in times of pain and suffering, when there seems to be no easy way out, help me to pray that your will be done. Increase in me a trust in you that even though I might find things difficult and trying to accept them, help me to follow and accept your will, especially during difficult and challenging times. Help me see that my will is not always best, that I might accept your perfect and holy will for me. In the name of your beloved Son, Jesus, who followed your will perfectly. Amen. I remember a time in college when I wanted God to follow my will like never before. I woke up one morning and I had a severe pain in the lower right side of my abdomen. I remember trying to walk down the hall of the dormitory only to be met by one of my friends who was asking me, what's wrong? I said, I got a lot of pain. And he asked where it was and I showed him and he said, try and jump. I said, jump? Not now. I, I couldn't jump if I wanted to. I said, this is terrible. And he looked at me and he said to me, you're going to have your appendix out by this afternoon. <laughs> Now, he's no doctor, but I went immediately over to the nurse's station because oh, I was very concerned. And all the way over to the nurse's office, I remember praying to God, please, Lord, let this just be severe gas in my intestines, something other than an appendix. I can't afford having a surgery right now. Please, oh, Lord, please. God answered my prayer. He answered that prayer according to his will. Even though I was praying not to have surgery, the Lord provided some surgeons who actually took out my appendix so that I might live another day. Let us pray. Gracious Father, sometimes my will in life does not always match yours. Help me to know that even when things are not going according to my plan and my way and my purpose, that you are there to help me through a better plan and a better purpose, yours. 
Thank you, dear Lord, for answering my prayers according to your will and not mine. I thank and praise you that you have a will and a plan for my life and always know what's best for me. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' prayer there in the Garden of Gethsemane, we see both his human side and his God side full blast. The God side of nature knew full well what his Father's will was. But the human nature of Jesus also was there, trying to see if there might be another way other than this horrendous suffering and torture that he knew he was about to face. I think he would have been ready to renegotiate at any time. But Jesus knew that he must follow the will of his Father above all else in spite of his anguish. It was on the night when Jesus was betrayed that he prayed this prayer. We know the depth of his anguish. We know it because of the words that were recorded that he was sorrowful even to death. He fell to the ground on his face and he pleaded and he begged with God, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus knew what lay before him. He knew the obedience that was expected by the Father to do his Father's will. That's why he also prayed, your will be done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I give thanks for the example Jesus shows me that no matter the circumstance in my life, no matter what I might think is best and the best way out, keep me faithful. Keep me trusting in you to live according to your will. Where I have not been obedient to your will and have followed my own, I plead for your forgiveness. Strengthen me to follow Jesus' obedience in my life, even when things look hopeless and grim. In the name of your obedient Son, I pray. Amen. Knowing the will of his Father, Jesus still experienced anguish. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What Jesus is asking is that he might not have to drink the terrible cup of suffering and God's wrath for our sin. He knew the answer as soon as he asked it. Not as I will, but as you will. I believe that Jesus said these words for our sake because we can really relate as humans to him and his anguish and his pain and the suffering that he was about to undergo. Finished with his prayer, Jesus stood to face his betrayer and in the morning he took up his cross for our salvation. He took it up. He carried it was laid on it, nailed to it, bled out on it. He drained the cup of God's anger against sin so there would be nothing left in it for us to have to drink. God's will was done. And God's will is done for us to redeem us of our sins. Let us pray. Father of our dear Savior Jesus, I thank you and I praise you for his obedience and faithfulness to carry out your will upon the cross for our redemption, to drink the cup of wrath that we were meant to drink. Because your will was completed in the unconditional and sacrificial faithfulness of your dear Son, I am free from all sin and will not have to suffer the eternal consequence of it. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you for the faith that receives the salvation he won for me on the cross. In the name of Jesus, I give you thanks. Amen. Your will be done. It's not a prayer of doubt. 
When we say those words, we are praying that God will do and allow what His will, what He wills is best for us even when it doesn't appear so. There is no greater ex- of example for us than God allowing His very own Son to be brutally beaten and tortured and humiliated the way that He was tortured and eventually had to shed His blood to the point of death. That was best. That was best, not for Jesus, but for us, for the eternal welfare of every one of us who were deserving of the very thing that he suffered. There are things and events that happen in the world that don't make sense, like putting to death someone in this fashion, even though they were innocent of every crime. We are even tempted to wonder where God is in all of this. We can't make sense of what's going on in the world right now. We're collectively going through the same thing at the same time. A virus, an enemy that we cannot see, that has taken over the world. The result of this virus is that we are now isolated from one another, distanced from each other, jobs lost, businesses, schools Places where we used to gather that are closing, parks, beaches, the stock market plummeting, investments being hit. And this isn't even the worst of it. There are those who are most vulnerable with respiratory problems and diabetes and heart pre- high blood pressure and, and those that are, that are over 65, all of these people so vulnerable to the attack of this vicious virus that thousands are dying. Now more than ever before, we need to pray, God, your will be done. Let us pray. Loving Father, when things don't make sense, when there's no rhyme or reason why things happen as they do, keep my thoughts and my heart focused on your will for me. I know your will is to provide for me and protect me, and so I plead that this continues to be done in my life and that I might grow in seeking your will for me in my life. So even in the most hopeless times, continue to show your love for me through your Spirit and through your Word. In the name of Jesus, who though he was without sin, became sin for us and died in our place for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray. Amen. Jesus not only teaches us the perfect prayer, but he embodies it. He is able to be obedient to the will of his Father, not just in the work that he did on the cross for our redemption, but through his entire life. The words, your will be done, are not words of weakness and doubt, but of strength and of trust. We know this because God tells us in His Word in Romans 8 that He he loves us as His children. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose, according to His will for us. This is God's will for us, to use each and every circumstance, be it good or bad, including this unprecedented time of pandemic, always pointing us and promising us the ultimate good of salvation and eternal life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, although I may think I know what is best, and I think I know what I want, I bring my petitions to you this night, confident that you will accomplish your holy will in my life. As my dear Lord Jesus prayed that your will would be done as he went to the cross for my salvation, teach me to pray always, not as I will, but as you will. Father, create in me a holy desire to want what you want for me. This I pray in the name of your dear Son who prayed for me and loved me enough to die and conquer sin 
and death for me, that I may live with you in your eternal kingdom. Amen.